Oh, welcome back. This is part two of the video tutorial of Pocket Money for the Desktop. We had left off. We had created a, two accounts, got them set up and going. And now I'm just going to go through the rest of the all the menu options and just kind of go through everything. So about just shows you the, ver the version of Pocket Money um, and copyright. Preferences. Preferences on Windows is actually under the Edit menu for options, but on the Mac it's under the Pocket Money menu. And let's see, so add repeating transactions X days in advance. Uh, this is going to be in the, next, the new version, that, uh, version 1.2, that isn't released quite yet, but it'll be the next version out. Um, auto add values to list. Whenever you enter something over here in the edit screen, it'll add it to the list automatically so these lists will grow for you. Transaction row size, standard or compressed. If you don't want them quite so tall and you want to see more data on the screen, you can do compressed row size. Security, just the password when you launch Pocket Money, it'll ask you for it. Currency, you can, it's multiple currencies is off by default, but if you turn it on, then you will have more options. And one of those options is this currency button here. You can handle transfers between accounts of different currencies. You can, if you're using your Visa, your American Visa card in Canada, you can enter your transactions while you're there. Um, enter the enter the Canadian amount. It looks up the current exchange, currency rates for you um, each time you launch the app or each day. Uh, so different currency types, decimal places. There are a few countries like Japan that have zero decimal places. Uh, show foreign amounts. This is going to be the amount that's in the register. So if you show foreign amounts. And we'll let me create one right now. Uh, let's say we're in here. We're gonna go to we're in Canada, and let's say we went to the bookstore and we bought a books. And let's say it's mm, actually we're gonna open up the currency editor. So the foreign amount. Let's say we paid forty dollars Canadian for it. And like I said, it's going to pull the current exchange rate, show the amount in the account. So now we're going to save this and save this. And I picked the wrong type because the Canadian dollar is probably the same. Let's try Euro. Okay, so Canadian dollar uses dollar sign also. So. That's why we had to set it to Euro, so you can see the different symbol here. So back here, so back to our currency preps, and we can turn that off, and then it would show the account amount. Uh, it's personal preference. I have both options on the iPhone version. And then the other options for this currency, the symbol before or after the number, examples of it, and then update exchange rates will manually go and update them, but it does it automatically for you, so you probably won't ever have to update the exchange rates manually, but it's there. Synchronization uh, shows your server IP address, which is the IP address of the current computer, the port number of the server is looking for the clients to connect to, and the synchronization is if you have your iPhone, you can sync from your iPhone or your Android to the desktop version, keep all your data in sync. Uh, start synchronization automatically whenever Pocket Money starts. I keep Pocket Money running all the time, so I can sync whenever I want to, and all that does is whenever Pocket Money launches, it actually automatically starts this up for you. And the Save Sync XML is for debugging purposes. You can actually leave this off. You don't need that on for any reason whatsoever, unless we're having issues. I might have you turn it on so that you can generate the XML file to look at things. But most all those bugs have been gone, I think. So I don't know of any current bugs on that. And then file transfer file transfers is for your import export. Uh, different encoding type types, um, depending on what, what you're using. Uh, mostly when you download QIF files from the bank, it's going to be like either Western Latin or Mac Roman, one of these guys. These other types are for basically you know, Chinese, Japanese, Russian, Greek. Uh, date formats, the default that bank quicken imports, exports is this format here. 
month a year, that's what the default is. Um, but depending on if you export your data from a bank to a different format, I mean, they might export one of these formats. You just have to look at the QIF file, figure out what format it is, and match it up here. And this is a way to do it. set the format here without having to go into your system preferences to switch your region settings and things like that. Date separator, likewise. Um, different countries, different date formats. That's the preference menu. File menu, new. You create a new, a new file. We've already gone through this. Open, you can open an existing file. Uh, close current file, save, save as. Really don't do a whole lot. You can rename this file to something else. Uh, stop sync server is the same as just clicking on the button over here. And then export and import. Uh, you can export whatever is currently showing in the register in these different formats. And same with the import. You can pick a file import. It'll import it into whatever your current account is, the current file name is. And we also import Quicken Essentials so you can get your data from Quicken Essentials over to Pocket Money if you need to. Edit, standard edit menu, cut, copy, paste. Select all. The option menu will be here for Windows users. Accounts, new account, creates a new account here. Account info, let's say we click on this account and we want to go to the account info, we can do the account info screen. We should also go right click on the account and do get the account info that way also. So account info, uh, delete account, deletes it, rename account, renames it. And then view, view lets you see all your accounts, your non-zero accounts or your total worth accounts, similar to the iPhone. So total worth are these accounts that you're, let's say we went into account info and we turned off the total worth checkbox. And then now cash will disappear. Well, it won't disappear. Let me see, view. They will disappear once you refresh it. Um, and then it only shows that account. And to get them back, you say show all, and you get to see them all. You'll also notice my total worth when I only sh is only the balance for the personal checking account because I turned off the total worth for cash. And actually, we can toggle it right from here. So include in total worth, you'll know. So notice that gets updated. Transactions, a new transaction, shortcut command N. Um, edit transaction, if you're on the row, you can edit it and I'll. Oh, special case. So if you're a transfer, you, you only have you can only edit the main where it came from. You can't edit the other side. So we'd have to go over here, edit this transfer here. You'll also notice transfers are in uh, less than greater than signs. That just shows it's transfer. Um, the other options you might have, you can have splits. So let's say we were here and we had a couple items here for uh, edit. Edit and maybe food and food and gas. Maybe we're at the car, the car, the gas station. Food and gas. So now you'll see a splits here, and you'll also know splits are here and here. And that's one thing that you do. If you um, hold down the Option key, the Alt key, and double click on it, it will actually automatically open up the splits window for you. And you also, you'll notice you also have photos. So I, let's just, uh, we're on, talking about transactions, so I'll just go through here. So we're at the edit transaction. You can have splits, and like I said, it's just select the item, plus minus, create a new split. Um, you make sure you're in edit mode, or else you won't be clicking things and things won't work for you. Um, and you can set all these different things for the splits. Photos, you can sync up your photos from the iPhone. You can add pictures, so you might, uh, pick a picture and add it to your uh, let me find a good picture here That's a big one, but let's do this one. Okay, so it shrinks it down to size, and you have your picture here. And you can have as many pictures as you want, and just keep adding pictures. So you might have a receipt, you might have a warranty. Just keep adding them. And of course, hit save. Adjust balance is going to adjust the balance for your register. So maybe I have um, my balance got out of whack, so I want to put in a new balance. 
create the adjustment. Yep. And you'll notice it said the previous screen was all or cleared. All will be post a transaction that's non cleared. And if I were to adjust balance for cleared, maybe it's a little bit different, but maybe I only have 1500 cleared. And that'll post an adjustment for just that. Um, <laughs> And it didn't work because it was actually currently 1500 cleared. So let's adjust the balance for a different amount. And let's call this uh, 1800. So we'll see a, should see a $300 adjustment, create the adjustment for that. So there's our adjustment. And typically you'd want to create your cleared adjustment before your overall adjustment because clear adjustment also affects the overall balance. Uh, next, transactions. Show splits was what I just showed you. If you're on a transaction, you should say show splits. I'll open to show splits when. And then show all transactions is the same as clicking this. Report. Summarize reports account. Summarize by account. Category summarized by category. Summarized by class. Summarized by payee. And as I showed you earlier, if you click all transactions, you can run the reports across all your accounts or just go into an individual account and run the report that way. Manage. Edit your your um, your list classes categories classes um, IDs payees don't have a whole lot in here yet because we just started this and repeating transactions if you had some you'd be able to uh, uh, just look at them you can't really manage repeating transactions yet and that's it window options and then help uh, report bugs go over to our forums and then the pocket money help which gives you a little bit of help on some of the features here, uh, getting started. Uh, some of the main features, just real quick, and then help for pocket money sync. And if you have other questions, actually go to pocket money forums. There's people there willing to help you out uh, and get you started.